Hello my dear students. Good morning. Myself Dr. Nagraj, Professor and HOD, Department of Physics, Bangalore Institute of Technology would like to welcome you all to the video session on elasticity. I hope our previous videos were useful and you are benefited by the contents of those videos. If you still have any doubts or any clarifications you want, please feel free and contact us. Well, in this module, uh, the syllabus we have divided like this. First, we start with fundamentals. In fundamentals, we give little bit of introduction to materials, then move on to elasticity, then microscopic view of elasticity, stress strain, importance of elastic materials, factors affecting elasticity, strain hardening and softening. Next is Hooke's law and elastic moduli, where we have some fundamental definitions as well as few derivations. And finally, beams and torsion of a cylinder. This is mainly focused on definition of beams, types of beams, bending of beams, single cantilever and torsional pendulum. So we will discuss these things one by one. First, I give you brief introduction to materials. Materials have become inevitable part of human life. Development and advancement of the civilization is intimately connected to usage of materials and hence early civilizations were categorized into Stone Age, Bronze Age and Iron Age based on the usage of materials in that period. Initially, man was aware of very few materials such as wood, stone, clay and some metals. Today, in the present world, we have thousands of materials which includes metals, alloys, plastics, glasses, fibers, polymers, etc. The usage of the material is strongly decided by its properties. For instance, while choosing materials for civil, mechanical and automobile engineering applications, one has to focus mainly on the mechanical and thermal properties. Similarly, for electrical and allied engineering applications, electrical and optical properties must be emphasized. Properties are closely related to structure of the material. In this chapter, we need to study some fundamentals of mechanical or elastic properties of materials. So that is our main objective. Mechanical properties of a material reflect mainly on the relation between its deformation and applied force or load. See, when a material is subjected to external force, there will be a sort of deformation. So before choosing such type of material, we have to first of all understand whether it is able to sustain the load or not without much deformation. Then only we can decide whether it is suitable for constructive application or not. So that is the main objective of the study of mechanical properties that is elasticity. Many materials when in service are subjected to forces or loads. As a result, there will be deformation. It is essential to know whether deformation is excessive or not. First of all, see what is deformation. Whenever a load is attached to a thin hanging wire or applied tangentially to the surface of a slab, there will be increase in the length of the wire or area of the slab or even volume also. So this change in the dimension is known as deformation. So whenever you strain the wire means when you apply the load on wire or you apply force tangentially to the surface there will be increase in the dimensions. This is known as deformation. In a material if deformation is temporary and vanishes immediately after the load is removed then the material is termed as elastic and the phenomena is known as elasticity. If a material retains the deformation even when the load is withdrawn, then it is termed as plastic. Most of the solids are very good elastic in nature, but perfect elasticity is an approximation of the real world. I hope you now know what is deformation, when the body is termed as elastic and when it is plastic. If the deformation vanishes, it is elastic. If the deformation retains, then it is termed as plastic. Let us see what is the actual reason for elastic nature that is microscopic view of elasticity. In solids as you all know molecules are arranged in a regular manner and there exists what is known as intermolecular force of attraction also known as cohesive force. It is a short range force 
and offer resistance against the deformation so it is an attraction the force of resistance increases with the increase in deformation when the external force is removed the force of resistance also vanishes and the body will spring back to its original position that means deformation vanishes this is the microscopic view of elasticity since the cohesive force is responsible for restoring the original shape of the body it is also called as restoring force look at this illustration here all the circles are molecules or atoms which are regularly arranged between each adjacent molecule there exists spring action that is intermolecular force of attraction so between these two you have between these two you have but between these two no no force exists that means intermolecular force is short range it exists only between the adjacent molecules well it is attractive suppose if you apply load means if you pull the layer like this the lower most layer is deformed means it increase it moves to the next position it moves through certain distance immediately cohesive force will sink into action will try to pull the layer back if you remove the load then the whole layer will spring back to its original position see this was the original position this is the deformed position so this is what is known as deformation if this this deformation vanishes when you remove the load then material is elastic otherwise it is plastic so this is the microscopic view of elasticity okay students we will proceed further while discussing elasticity we frequently use these two terms namely stress and strain these two terms are closely associated with elasticity let us define them stress it is the ratio of restoring force and cross sectional area of the body across which the force is applied so stress is the force per unit area but remember force is not applied force it is restoring force but the magnitude of restoring force is equal to magnitude of the applied force but acting in the opposite direction that that's what we saw in the previous slide hence sometimes stress is also defined as force per unit area here i would like to make one clarification in general sense applied force per unit area is known as pressure but here it is not applied force per unit area it is restoring force per unit area and it is stress stress is restoring force per unit area pressure is applied force per unit area but since restoring force magnitude is same as applied force we just write it as f divided by a i hope you understood and the unit of stress and pressure both same that is newton per meter square moving on to strain strain is the ratio of change in the length or area or volume of a body to its original length or area or volume that means in total it is ratio of change in the dimension to the original dimension here i have written it as e equals small l divided by capital l small l is change in the length capital l is original length it can be change in the area divided by original area or change in the volume divided by original volume and you can easily make out that strain is a dimensionless quantity means it does not carry any unit next up types of stresses see in stresses there are two types number 1 tensile stress when a section of a material is subjected to two equal and opposite pulls its length increases the stress induced in this case is known as tensile stress and corresponding strain is tensile strain that means when you stretch a body its length or area or volume increases so it is tensile on the other hand compressive stress when you apply a force such a way that two equal and opposite pushes its length shorten the stress induced in this case is known as compressive stress and corresponding strain is compressive strain that means when a section of material is subjected to two equal and opposite forces in the 
opposite direction that is pushes opposite to this pull earlier it was pulled now it is pushed then there will be decrease in the dimension so this type of stress is compressive as the name itself indicates that there is a compression here it is elongation here it is compression look at these diagrams in this case forces are acting away from the body means it is something like a pull as a result there is increase in the length this is tensile this is compressive forces are acting towards the body so as a result its length is reduced the whole material is now shortened so this type of stress is compressive stress correspondingly we have tensile strain and compressive strain well there is one more classification this time the classification is based on the direction of the applied force so based on that we can define three types of stress and strains it goes like this first is linear stress when the force is applied along the length of the material wire then its length increases the stress induced in this case is linear or longitudinal stress so it is defined as longitudinal force per unit area the ratio of change in the length to the original length is known as linear or longitudinal strain so linear stress is force per unit area that is longitudinal force per unit area linear strain is change in the length divided by original length look at this diagram we have a wire uniform wire of initial length capital l and you apply force like this this is linear force or longitudinal force then in there is a change in the length this much increase takes place so small l is increase in the length therefore linear strain is change in the length divided by original length so that's all about linear stress coming to second type shear stress when the force is applied along the surface of the material slab whose one end is fixed then its surface area will change now the induced stress is known as shear stress or tangential stress so it is defined as tangential force per unit area please look at the difference in the earlier case force was applied along the length now the force is applied along the area so force applied along the length is linear force force applied along the area is tangential force so tangential force per unit area is known as tangential stress ratio of change in the area to the original area is known as shear strain so it is small a divided by capital a shear stress even here also written as f divided by a only but the difference is this f is tangential force this f is linear force look at the diagram i have a cross section of a cube that is a b c d is the cross section assume that side length is l the base c d is rigidly fixed and apply force tangentially to the upper surface of the cube as a result a b moves to a dash b dash so there is a layer by layer deformation so uppermost layer deforms most and lower most layer deforms least means there is no deformation with respect to cd as a result the whole abcd square takes this parallelogram shape with an angle of shear that is theta here i have a small derivation look at this triangle b b dash c in that i can write tan theta it is bb dash divided by bc that is opposite side by adjacent side that is equal to small l by capital l this is small l this is capital l that is change in the length divided by original length by definition change in the dimension to the original dimension is strain only i call this as shear strain so i can write tan theta is simply equal to shear strain but of course that shearing is very very small what i mean to say theta is very small and for small angles tan theta is approximated to theta therefore shear strain is just equal to theta so here onwards 
instead of calling shear strain is equal to small a by capital A, I just write it as theta and theta is known as angle of shear. Now comes the third one, volume stress. When a force is applied uniformly in all the directions to a body, then its volume changes. Now the induced stress is known as volume stress or normal stress or bulk stress. So it is defined as normal force per unit area. Ratio of change in the volume to the original volume is known as volume strain. See volume strain is small v divided by capital V. Of course stress is once again F divided by A only. So in all these three equations it is F divided by A. But the nature of the force is not same. In the first case it is linear. Next it is tangential. Now it is normal force. So these are the three types of stresses and strains. Well dear students so far we had fundamental background of elasticity. So we discussed something about stress, strain, microscopic view of elasticity, different types of stress and strain. We have to discuss many more things such as importance of elastic materials, factors affecting elasticity, strain hardening, strain softening and many more. That I will take up in my next session. Please wait for my next session. So far, thanks for your cooperation. If you have any doubts, please contact me. Feel free. Thank you once again.